My guest this evening, on this Christmas evening, is a UK music superstar, which is a superstar to me. It is, of course, Karen Danzig, one half, the her half of the hitman and her, Karen. Merry Christmas, felicitous, felicitations, how are you? Thank you, I'm really Thanks well. Thanks for coming in on such a big Thank you for inviting day. me, and it's fantastic to be here. And Felix Navidad, I hope I've said we, that we, right. We, we're doing it in is Spanish that right? as well. Yes, it is, it is indeed. <laughs> Nadolik Salen, by the way. Frolika Weineken. I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's the German. <laughs> ah, they're good. Happy Christmas in German to all the German people. Happy now Christmas. Then. Talking of Germans, you are of German parentage. Well, my grandfather was German on my dad's side, and uh, but he came over when he, he came over to the UK when he was in his teens. Uh -huh. So pretty young, left his parents behind and started a company in the UK. Yeah, very in interesting background. Uh, very I, I, interesting. I was reading this morning, your parents were both deaf, your sister was deaf, your brother, your brother had full hearing. Now, yes. With your singing, did that, help, did that have any, any bearing on, on...? I think it was my way of getting attention, my way of having my moment where I could shine, because when you grow up in a deaf family, you have to be very, very patient and very, uh, you have to do a lot more things, I think, than any normal child in a normal family would have to do. You, you know, you ha I had to make phone calls for my parents and do, be, be a bit more involved and responsible. So, so sign language, you, you're, you must A be... little bit of sign language, but mostly my parents could lip read and they ah, could okay. talk. Yeah, yeah. So they did communicate yeah, yeah. easily themselves, but um, I had to listen. I had to listen a lot. And for them to, well, I think just because I'd had to be so patient and so good at listening, when I was singing, that really was my moment yeah. to do, to be heard, really. It was my way of okay. being heard and seen. And, her, and heard you are. Now, <laughs> we have something in common, as you know. We're both born, although I do say I'm Welsh people, I was actually born in Watford, Bushy Hertfordshire. Watford, yay! And so was Karen. <laughs> and of course, we're both the, 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 the fairest of all star signs. We're both Cancerians, arty. Creative, poetic, yes. Emotional. Very sen sensitive. sensitive. Home loving. <sighs> ish. 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 Bit Supposed to be. Bit of a gypsy love me, I'm afraid, but. Yeah, okay, but I'm you're, a gypsy we're, crab. we're crabs, so we carry our shell. Well, that's, yeah. that could count that's too because we're crabs, we carry our shell on our backs with us, so. Yes. College. Cancerian. You studied music and acting and art. Yes. In three separate colleges, tell me. Two separate colleges. Two. Yes. Well, well, I started singing very young when I was about 11. I went to a school of music and I did proper classical singing and learned all, did all the grades. Something learned, else we have in common. Learned all the theory and I sung with the National Youth Choir mm -hmm. of Great Britain. We did a world tour. So I was very well versed in classical singing. That was what I did. But I always really just wanted to be a pop star. For my no, sins. We all, don't we all? <laughs> you've got an honest degree in, 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 yeah, in music. Yes, so, but I decided I would. I wanted to get fully qualified first before I went off and did the singing. A fully so, qualified. So I went to be. A, yeah. So I did my degree, got a first class degree in music and performing arts uh, in Chichester at university there, and then I went on for a year to do acting and musical theatre. I really wanted to be armed with everything I needed under every, my belt. Every, and, every tool in, 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 yes, in, in the. Yes, and to case. be experienced, and and you know, of course, there's always that fear that it, it might not work out and I just wanted business, to protect Karen. myself yes yeah, I knew no business. one was going to help me so I thought well I need to be prepared I need to have everything in place well, somebody you know. did help you is was stock and eight kid yes that where was, was Waterman he'd long gone by then that was so after this, he left yes this was this would have been in the mid 90s oh, right so this was my first big break actually after I left was that when he went college. to college because I worked with one of them I can't remember which one it was but one of them was fiercely into motor racing it might have been Waterman. Uh, uh, yes, was oh, there was one. Yes, he had his own race, uh, team. race and he had his own uh, indoor model. I think it was an indoor model railway oh, as dear, well we that he had. There's then. a whole other thing. Yes, all that <laughs> stuff. But now, I don't think I actually met Pete Waterman. I'm not but sure. But you're part of that big. But I knew, wagon. I knew. Yes. Yeah, so I was working with Stock and Aitken, and they had this fantastic studio in South East London. Um, you know, you walked in and there was a huge dance studio on one side, great big recording studio on another, and you were just you you were blown away because they had all the gold discs you on the wall. The every, every gold, you know, all the famous artists of those that era when they were successful, all the pictures: Sonia, Kylie, Jason Donovan, Rick Astley, and you just thought, 
I remember turning up and going, wow, yeah. I've made it. I mean, I've made I mean, it. I'm so you here. This is it. So I recorded a project with them, which was a kind of Blondie-esque band project. Right. And, and a new um, age? It was, well, it was a mix. At that time, it was a mix of Republica and Garbage uh, and Blondie. See, I'm confused Those three suddenly. things. But anyway, those kind of things. But it, yeah. it had the pop slant from right. Stock and Aitken, so it was very commercial, but it had that bit of a grungy kind of rocky feel. And that was so exciting, did that, fantastic. That, 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 where did that go? But sadly, it didn't really go anywhere. Right. And you know, when I was listening to their music at that time, it wasn't what it was. It wasn't what it had been. Right, yeah, and yeah. it was quite disappointing. You know, I was at the tail end of it all. And, and that was when my manager at that time said to me, Karen, you need to write your own music. You need to start writing songs right. for yourself because you could do better than this. I mean, not saying I could be better than Stock and Aking, but the well, stuff at that time wasn't great. That's quite a compliment. You could do better than Stock and <laughs> Get more to me, but at racing. that time, so that was actually what inspired me to start writing, and I've been writing ever since then. And uh, when I did finally get some success, they were mostly records that I'd written or co-written. Right. And with were, you did the, you did the first series of X Factor. I did for my sins. With the young oh, Simon Cowell. Golly, yes. So that was way back. That would have been when uh, what was Steve Brookstein yeah. won, and that was another very exciting time actually for me I I had a girl band I wrote all the songs and I was in it there were three of us and we decided the X Factor could be our route to making it big called and Pop, uh, though, no this was the next project I've done oh, so right. many projects this was called Tula Oh, this is Tula. Okay, this is Tula. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we had very high hopes. Three very strong voices, all three part harmonies, really great pop dance songs. Uh, went through the auditions. Very, very nerve wracking because the cameras are on you all the time. Who judges then? So this would, was when Sharon was on the panel. All oh, right, original uh, so Sharon. The original. Was this, was this pre plastic surgery, Sharon? Yes, I, I suppose it must have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. We Not thought better. she would be on our side totally because we were all a little bit older than you really should be to be a pop star. We were all, I think, late, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we thought, well, Sharon's going to love us because we're women, we're real women, we're singing about real issues. And it wasn't like that. She didn't like it. Oh, she dear. was the one that didn't like us at all. And oh, we, we I mean, it was such a shame because we performed magnificently. We couldn't have performed any better. And as the cameras were following us around, I remember them all saying, oh, you're going to get through, you're going to be really good. And, and it didn't work out. And then when we saw the acts that had gone through, you know, remembering, bearing in mind that this was the first ever series, you didn't really know what to make of it. You, we realised they were putting through acts that, were just comedy value, you yeah, know, yeah. that were comical, that, you know, were rubbish singers. And we were like, why did they going get through? The view, why didn't we get through? Yeah, yeah. And we had no idea it was going to be like that. We thought it was going to be a talent show for real singers like us. And it wasn't. And it certainly wasn't. Now, moving forward to now, how long have you been in Marbella? We've been here almost two and a half years now fresh. so not that long fresh. yeah very fresh when Karen says we of course she means Bill Padley which is the hitman part of the hitman and her yes that's performing right. all up and down uh, the, the Marbella yeah night we're spots. enjoying it yeah, yeah we've only been together performing like this for probably about a year really. they're legendary let me tell you people and <laughs> thank actually, you and Johnny Bill Padley actually is legendary because <laughs> he he's is. written oh, he he's is. written what two number ones three four number ones He's for Atomic Kitten, yes. he's written the biggest yes. selling X Factor song of all time. Of all time, which people. Was, so that's uh, kind of legendary. Yeah, the Shane Ward, that's Shane my Ward, goal yeah, yeah. song. And the Atomic Kitten, which was that one? Which was Hole Again. Hole Again, Hole yeah, Again, yeah. big record. Big, stuff, people, big, big record, stuff. and he's won a he won an Ivan Novello Award and several Brit nominations, Brit Award nominations. He he's much more of a legend than I no, ever was. <laughs> Now you can catch them, uh, catch a bit of the Hitman and her. That's Karen and Bill at uh, what La Sala, yes, Rincon, or other at both venues. Oh, both venues regularly. Okay. So look uh, out, you can look out, you can find it on your Facebook. Yeah, most weekends we're at one okay. of the La Sala venues, and we'll be doing a few more venues, uh, some new places in the new year. Right. Well, and we'll, of we'll course, we go and do private parties and weddings, and we have fun. We were singing in a furniture shop in San Pedro just last week, which was actually one of my 
most favourite gigs. Where she bought the dress. <laughs> Cameron, it's been a pleasure. Uh, um, you. Later on, you're going to sing something Christmassy for us. I might even, I might even join in. Please do. Who Please knows? do. Um, Please do. So, in the meantime. Uh, and now we're going to have an extra special Christmas treat because Karen is going to sing for us. Merry Christmas to you and a Merry That's Christmas so great, yeah. to all of you. That does bring us actually Good. to the end of our programme for this evening. It's Christmas Day. Next time we'll be with you. It will actually be the 1st of January. You'll have had your New Year's celebrations. We wish you lots of love, health and happiness. And that's no, it no, for no, the no, rest no. of us, exactly. Well, We're going one. to toast to your health, thanks to Jaime with a molecular experience. Okay. We're going for the balls, people. <laughs> <laughs> pearls. <laughs> They're pearls. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Mind your pearls. Oh, oh, We've it's dropped your ball. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what what flavour is this one? Gin tonic. Gin tonic, there you go. Okay. Nothing Thank wrong with that. This one? Chin chin. Merry Christmas, everybody. A party for your mouth. Oh, You're good, my goodness. Absolutely fabulous. Woo! <laughs> Up, up. Delicious. Well, mm. Merry Christmas. Should we sing Merry it out? Merry Christmas, everybody. Why don't we sing to everybody? We can sing like okay. you. Come on. We'll, oh, just, we'll, we'll, we'll sing follow you. Okay. We'll sing Merry Christmas. Are you ready? We're ready. We'll follow your lead. Let's go. 
Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.